we're gonna do some upcycling today. I went thrifting yesterday. Look at this cute linen shirt I got. And I also picked up a few nice men's shirts for just a few dollars each. And I'm gonna show you how to take this traditional men's shirt and make it a cute off the shoulder shirt for you. What you're going to need besides the shirts is thread, needle, elastic. We're going to cut off the shoulders, make a little casing, put some elastic in it, and you've got a different style shirt. And I'm also gonna take one and change the sleeve a little bit too. So we'll have two different versions of the cute little shirt you've probably seen all over Pinterest and Instagram of the off the shoulder. Sort of looks like a men's shirt, but not quite. All right, let's go to the cutting table and I'll just show you, we're just gonna cut off the top of the shirt. The criteria for the shirt, when you're deciding to do this, really any button down shirt would work. However, if it has a pocket, you have to make sure that you have enough room to cut, to turn over and not hit your pocket. So I chose shirts without a pocket. If it has a yoke, you wanna make sure that you cut right below that yoke, again, so that it doesn't end up in your casing. And some shirts have a pleat in the back, which is fine. You just wanna make sure that, again, where you're cutting, that all that extra fabric that's in that pleat will just um, go in the back. So you just wanna watch where you're cutting. The other thing is you wanna make sure the shirt's too big for you. You want an oversized shirt. Um, it's not gonna look right if it's super fitted because it's not gonna give you enough gather in the shoulder. So I've gone with small shirts because I'm making these not for me. So these are smaller than me, but they're bigger than the person I'm sewing for. And then I'm going to cut the sleeve off of this one and this one's going to actually have a little gathered sleeve on it as well. So we're gonna have um, a gathered neckline and a gathered sleeve on this one. And on this one, we're going to go ahead and leave the cuff style. So all I'm going to do is cut right below this. I've just laid my yardstick across and I'm just double checking that I'm below the yoke when I'm cutting, which I am. And you want to make sure that you have enough room between this where you cut off and the first button to make your casing because see this is going to fold down. So that's, that has to be in your in consideration when you're doing this. We can face this if we have to and not do a self casing depending on the fabric that we have available. So we'll cut it off and then we'll make a decision if we need to face it with a, with a bias tape or if we can self face it. Here's my cutting line. Now that I've got the neck cut off of both of them, I'm going to cut the sleeve on this one just above the placket. We'll head to the sewing machine. Now that we've cut everything off, I'm just gonna go to my serger and finish off those raw edges that I cut. So here's the little sleeve. I've already gone around it. For the neckline, you want to make sure you either stay stitch or pin down this placket so it stays in place so that when you go across it, it doesn't move. So I'm gonna serge around everything really quickly and then we're gonna start making our um, casing for the elastics. Okay, so now that we have prepped our shirts, and I've gone in and I've actually just stitched down my little packet there and I'm working on the white one. I've surged around its neckline and I've started turning under um, a casing. How deep you turn on the casing depends on two things. I'll take this one because I haven't done anything to it yet. It's how much room you have from the top to the first button. We can fold all the way over up to the button being kind of at the top. You don't want the button to be like this on the top. You want it to have a little bit of fabric there. So we can turn over as much as we have allowed and that will give us how much elast how deep our elastic can be. I have one inch elastic and I have quarter inch elastic. So I could either do a one inch elastic and have a nice wide band or I can do two rows and have two smaller casings and have a double row of elastic and both are great. You could do either one, whichever you like. The other decision you have to make with your elastic is how much elastic you need to go around your shoulders. This is going to be dependent on each person individually. And what I think is the easiest way is to take your tape measure and measure around your shoulders. Okay? And then subtract at least two inches. Okay? So once I've done that, I'll take my piece of elastic, or you could just take your elastic. I do this all the time. Where I don't measure, I just use the elastic. Now this isn't for me. I'm just using me as an example, because I don't have the person here I'm going to do this to do this for. 
So you can take your elastic, wrap your elastic around. Now, without stretching, will not keep your shirt up. Make sure it's not twisted too. So here we are. Here's about my measurement without stretching. So then you need to stretch it so that it feels secure. And this is super stretchy elastic. So normally my rule for waists is um, take your measurement, subtract at least two inches because you'll also have some little wrap over, which means you'll end up losing about three. Um, and you may want even a little tighter than that. So this one, I'm gonna say it's about a four and a half, four and a half difference between my actual measurement and the what I would cut the elastic. So you just have to play with it, see what, fits for you, what feels good. You can even cut your elastic, put it in, and since we're, try it on before you finish off the little casing to see if it fits right. That's, it's an easy adjustment to make on a garment like this. And for the, the um, shirt where I'm gonna do a cuff, you also need to measure your little arms. You don't need it to be as tight on the arm. You really could be close to your arm measurement because most people, when they do a sleeve, they actually then push it up beyond the, where the at sleeve ends. So like if I, if I measure, my sleeve comes to here, and I make this measurement, but I almost always will push my sleeve up. So you need to think about where that's gonna fall in there and then cut your elastic for that for your little sleeve too. So now that we've done those things, we're going to start folding under our casing. And here's our first issue. Casing folds under beautifully, front and back. No issue, so easy, but you get to this sleeve and the sleeve at the neck where we've, where we've cut it off is much smaller than the actual sleeve where we're folding it under. So let me show you on this one. I've got it pinned so you can kind of see. See that? I've got a lot of fullness. So the easiest thing to do, I'm, I'm turning under an inch and a half. So what I'm going to do is run a basting line on my sleeve at the inch and a half line so that I can gather this up a little bit for making my casing. So I'm gonna, it's gonna be extra full right at the sleeve. It just will be. The only way to prevent that, if you want it to be less, and some people, I will just say, only do the elastic, like they don't do elastic in the very front. They make their casing start back here. So they have a flat front and then it gathers around, which you could do. You just have to sew your elastic down and you will need less elastic because this is completely flat. I think it's a little harder to get it to fit nice and you tend to need to do a strap or a cold shoulder or something else to get that to fit great. But that you, you're making this, this is your design so you can do what you please. You get to make it up. You wanna add ribbons to it, go for it. You wanna add, put a lace inset in there, do it. You can do anything. You're the designer, you are making this. So I'm going to, for myself, run a little basting line across the sleeve where my stitching line's going to be, gather that up so that it will meet this, so that when I fold it under, I won't have any issues. You could actually cut down how deep you need it to be to make it release, and then finish off that edge. You can do that. Here's the only, here's my caveat. If you cut along that grain line, even if you serge it or zigzag it or reinforce it, it's a weak spot. And what can happen is you can get a little tear and it'll rip all the way down your sleeve when you're wearing it one day. You'll just pull wrong, it'll pull in that spot and it'll, it'll rip because fabric always tears on the grain line and we will be cutting with our grain line to release that. So it's a little bit dangerous. I'm just not gonna do it. If you decide you wanna do that, if you'd rather do that than do the gathering, make sure you reinforce behind this, put a piece of interfacing, um, seam finish that really well, do something so that you don't have to worry about it uh, coming apart. And then when you flip this under to sew, you're actually gonna have a V open. It's gonna have a hole, which it, it's on the inside. That's, you know, you could fill that hole if you want to with a scrap of the fabric. I mean, there's a lot of things you could do. I'm just gonna do the gather method. I think it's it's gonna look cute to have a little fuller on the shoulder and it's more secure as far as the garment not um, tearing later on. So I'm gonna do my little basting stitch and then I'll show you what it looks like when I get it all pinned up and ready to stitch down. Okay, I'm using my washi tape method for my um, seam allowance. This is my fold line that I've marked. This is my inside edge and this is my basting edge. And I'm just gonna baste across this sleeve. When sewing that basting line for the sleeve, if you choose to do it this way, it's curved. This line's not gonna go straight across the sleeve. You can see the curved shape here. 
And so we're gonna kind of pivot it. Can you see how I kind of pinned it with my finger right there to kind of to keep it going with the shape of the shoulder. And now we're back into the straight home stretch. For both shirts, I've done the gathering so you can kind of see how it looks. It's actually pretty cute, just as is, even before the elastic. So now I've turned under and I'm ready to stitch. This is my stitching line because I'm using a wide elastic for my neckline. I just like the way it looks. Um, could easily do the double elastic. Here's my white one. So I'm going to stitch both of these in. I've also gone ahead and just hemmed the bottom of the one that I cut the sleeve off. And I'm going to put a casing up higher um, for elastic. And I'm going to use some seam binding um, on the inside of this. I, using what I have, you can tell this is really old. This was 95 cents. I wonder how old this is. 1986. <laughs> That's old. But I'm going to use this on the inside um, just to make a little seam binding and um, then we're going to be ready to start fishing our elastic through. When sewing this at the machine, I'm going to start at the back shoulder for both of them. You always want to start and finish your casings, anything like that, in the back in a less noticeable place. So I usually don't do center back as a rule. Um, I t tend to go towards the shoulder and I'm going to leave a little hole so I can fish my elastic through for both of them. So I'm going to go ahead and make my casings and then we'll come back and put our elastic in. So this is how it looks with the casing in before elastic. This is the sleeve. I think the sleeve looks really cute, slightly overgathered. And I'm ready to put my elastic in this one. I have one with the elastic in, so you can kind of see how it looks. Isn't that cute? Look at how cute that looks. Nice and stretchy. So now I'm going to fish the elastic through on this one and sew it up. So it's going to look like this. And then I'm going to sew on a little casing inside here for the sleeve. And depending on where you want, like I could have just turned this up and done a casing at the bottom, but I kind of want a little um, ruffled edge at the at the hem so I'm going to do my casing up a little higher and then it gives me a little ruffled edge. You could if you wanted to um, before you put the elastic in make sure you make a deep enough casing you could do an extra row at the top like a quarter of an inch down and that would give you a little tiny ruffle across the top and then make your case casing depth you just need to make sure you have enough depth for elastic and that extra ruffle but it would look very cute. All right, I'm going to put the elastic in the other one. We've done it before lots of times. Safety pin on one side, fish it through. Make sure you pin down the other so you don't lose it inside your casing. Um, when you get both ends out, you overlap them, zigzag them together, then pull it inside and straight stitch the little opening that you had left in your casing. So I'm going to do that. And um, I'll show you a close-up of me sewing on the lace for the sleeve casing, and then we'll have two cute new finished shirts. So I'm just doing the casing for the inside of the sleeve and I'm going to leave a little space between the two edges of my lace right here at the underarm seam and I'm just straight stitching down and kind of in this little channel right here on both sides so this is my first pass through I have the sleeve hem lined up on the one inch mark on my machine and I can just um, zoom around and get it stitched in so I'm going to do that for both sleeves. And this is how the casing looks from the inside you can see there's just a hole right here where the uh, seam is. So I'm gonna put some elastic in it now. Turned out so cute, very easy and fast. I've tied this one up, but depending on the size that you do, um, if you get one that's very oversized or long, this could easily be a little mini dress. Looks so cute with a pair of boyfriend jeans, bike shorts. Let's look at shirt number two. Here's shirt number two. Could be tied just like the other one. Look at how cute the little sleeve turned out. I thrifted these shirts so I have a $4 investment per shirt. Depends on the quality and where you get your thrifts. Um, how expensive it would be. I already had the elastic so I have no extra expense for elastic. So a very inexpensive project. Fast. I see these everywhere, this style. So now you can go out and make your own. 
for very little investment in time or money. Both of these took me about a, less than an hour and a half to completely sew. See you next week for another fun video.